Hello, in today's tutorial video, I'll be teaching you how to run a Western blot. So before I go ahead and show you the steps to performing a Western blot, let's briefly talk about what it is. So what is Western blot technique? Basically, it's a technique used to detect proteins, and that can be from your choice of sample. In my case, you'll see that my samples are cells, but you can um, isolate the proteins from tissue, plants, bacteria, etc. So how does it work? Uh, briefly, what Western blot does is that it separates proteins by their molecular weight. And so in order to do that, we make use of the sodium decyl sulfate polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, um, SDS page for short. So when you're in the lab, very rarely will someone say the entire name. So we refer to it as an SDS gel or a page gel. And so what that does is that um, the sodium decyl sulfate has a negative charge to it, which masks the negative charge of our proteins. So when we're running an SDS page, you basically do the running mainly by their molecular weight. So now that you know what uh, Western blot is and why we use it, let's talk about the different steps um, when performing a Western blot. So the first step is preparing your cell lysate. Once we have our cell lysate, uh, we have to determine protein concentration. Once we know our total um, protein concentration, we then move on to prepare and denature our sample so then we can run it in our SDS page show, which will be separating our protein samples by size. Once we run our SDS page show, our third step is to do a transfer. Um, but before I talk about transferring our samples for some um, experiments, they will finish at an SDS page and you can actually do a Kamasi blue stain or a Ponsu staining, also called red staining, if that's all you need it for. In my case, we have antibody specific for um, our proteins. So then we go ahead and do a transfer. For my tutorial video, I'll be showing you how to do a dry transfer, which is what I do. But there are three types of transfer. So depending on what you're doing in your lab, um, Traditionally, people do a wet transfer. There's also the semi-dry transfer, and the fastest is the dry transfer. So that's one of the biggest advantage of doing a dry transfer. You complete the whole transfer in seven minutes, five, six minutes, depending on your protein. Wet transfers take hours. Um, here I put a star because what I use to transfer to transfer my proteins from an SDS page onto a nitrocellulose. Uh, membrane. So I use nitrocellulose membrane. The other very common membrane is a PVDF or polyvinylene difluoride membrane. And once we finish doing the transfer, our, our fourth step is the incubation with the antibodies. So I do a two-step incubation. I use a primary antibody. This is the antibody that is specific for my protein of interest. Once we're done doing that incubation, I go ahead and wash, then do a secondary antibody incubation. This antibody is usually the one that um, has a fluorescent tag that can be detected, uh, depending on the machine that you're using, and this secondary antibody is specific to your primary. Nowadays, you can actually buy already um, conjugated primary antibodies, meaning that this antibody is conjugated to a fluorescent uh, molecule, fluorescent protein, so you don't have to do a primary and secondary. You just have to make sure that it's commercially available or you can develop it in your lab. And then I go ahead, once I'm, I completed my secondary antibody incubation, wash, and after washing um, for the particular system that I use, I let my nitrocellulose to dry for an hour or overnight, and then I go ahead and develop my membrane. And I'm actually using the Lycor uh, machine for developing, so I'll go ahead and in my tutorial video show you how I do that. 
So briefly to recap the steps of running a western blot. First, we're going to prepare our cell lysate. Second, I'm going to run an SDS page. Then I'll transfer my proteins onto a nitrocellulose membrane, followed by my primary antibody incubation, then secondary, and last by developing my membrane. So right now I have all my materials ready to go in order to lyse my um, cells that I'll be using for Western blotting. So what I already did is I already um, washed them twice with TBS. Make sure that your TBS, you're using 1X TBS and it's cold. Um, and once I washed it twice, I aspirated, make sure that there was no extra TBS on the samples and then I added 90 microliters of my RIPA buffer. I'm using this uh, Sigma RIPA buffer and to that I aliquot 10 mils into a 15 mil conical tube as you can see here and to that I add one tablet of the complete mini EDTA free EC pack. Uh, before I start lysing my samples, I go ahead and I already label my tubes. The first set of tubes are the ones that I'll be adding my cell lysates onto them. And then I have to, um, I briefly vortex them, spun them down. Once I spun them down, I remove the supernatant, which I'll show you in a second. And then um, put them into my pre-labeled tubes. And note that I also have these other tubes with that say PTN for protein. I take a little aliquot, I take 10 microliters of my sample um, and dilute it three times. I do a dilution factor of three and these are the ones that I'll be using in order to measure my protein concentration. 
organizing my cells, I'm going to be using these cell scrapers from the Fisher brand um, company. These are disposable cell scrapers and they come in these um, sterile packages. And my samples are here on ice. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and lice my cells. I'm using this six wall plate. And once again, my 90 microliters of ripple buffer um, it's already added into the well. So make sure that when you're scraping, use that flat edge and go around the well a couple times up and down. You want to make sure you collect as many of the cells that have attached to the bottom in this cell life state. And so once you're done with that, make sure that you um, scrape any of that rib up buffer with your cell lysate all the way to the bottom and I think you are able to see that it collects at the bottom you can mix it a little bit even rinse a little bit up here and make sure you collect as much as you can we are going to need every single little bit for our Western block. Okay. That's it.
after lysing my samples I go ahead and I spin them down for 15 minutes at 13 um, rpm and so here are my samples and I tend to orient them with the bottom down in order to make sure that the pellet, um, the cell pellet is in one location. So let's see if we can see it here. So you can see here the cell pellet, see tiny little white dot and that is the reason why I orient my tubes this way to make sure that the cell pellet is in the same location um, for all my samples. So now that I have my super natant, you can see there the cell pellet. It's very tiny. So we want to make sure we remove the super natant without disturbing that cell pellet. And you should be able to see the leftover cell pellet. And there's the leftover um, cell pellet. So you see the cell pellet, we want to gently remove the cell supernatant without disturbing that cell pellet because we do not want that in our samples. And once you do that, you can actually see the um, leftover cell pellet. There you go. Okay, so now that I have, um, now that I have removed my cell lysates, you can see them here. I have 90 microliters of my cell lysates. I will go ahead and take um, 10 microliters of each sample and dilute it into the tubes where I already have 20 microliters of my RIPA buffer in order to make a dilution factor of 3. Now that I've finished um, isolating my cell supernatant without the cell pellet, I will go ahead and take an aliquot from my samples. I take 10 microliters of my samples and then dilute it with 20 microliters of RIPA buffer my lysis buffer in order to have a dilution factor of three. So I have my pipette ready to go, 10 microliters. Gently mix up and down. Take your aliquot and then mix it onto your rip up buffer. Do a couple of these, mix up and down. Make sure your tubes are well sealed. Mix it with the 20 microliters of RIPA buffer. Okay. Now go ahead and finish the rest. 
spicy buffer. So I'm gonna prepare now that I have my samples um, sliced and I have my supernatant collected. I'm gonna prepare my protein sample for um, to measure protein concentration. So I have 30 microliters here of um, Lysis buffer and I'm gonna add 10 microliters of my samples into here to have a one to four dilution. So have the 10 microliters. Once the cell lysate has been collected and I have aliquoted my little bit for my protein assay, I start getting ready to do my um, protein assay. I'm using this Pierce BCA protein assay and it, has, it comes with these two reagents that I'm going to mix together. And like everything else that you do, make sure that you have your protocol. For my particular assay, I use the 96 well microplate and I load in triplicates. So my ladder in triplicates and my samples in triplicates. And so I have here the instructions for my microplate procedure that I use. So really straightforward. I use 10 microliters of my samples that I load into each um, well of my 96 well plate and then of the mixture with the protein assay reagent A and B I will load 200 microliters of that to my 10 microliters of sample incubate for 30 minutes at 37 and then read at 562 nanometers Another thing that it's important to have are the, um, uh, we use BCA, we use actually this albumin standard in order to make our protein ladder. So we have blank buffer, which is our RIPA buffer that we use to lyse our cells. And then these are the concentrations that we use to make our ladder. You can optimize that the way that you want it. And for our albumin standard, it's basically what we dilute. They come in these little ampules that you can see here. And it brings one uh, milliliter of two milligrams per mil of this bovine serum albumin. Okay, so I'm gonna start loading my samples. I'm going to go ahead and get my reagents A and B ready. And this is once again, uh, we dilute this one to 50 into our reagent date. 
After loading my protein ladder, I'm gonna go ahead and start loading my actual diluted samples. So starting with my sample one. And same, 10 microliters of each. So pipette up and down, and then add your 10 microliters to each well.
Once I loaded all my samples and protein ladder, then I make the calculations to know how much of the reagents A and B I need for my assay. Here I'm showing the calculations I did for my BCA reagents A and B. So the number of wells that I'm using, um, it's 60 and I always estimate up. In this case, I added two more extra wells to make sure that I don't run out of reagents. So for my reagent A, I do 62 wells times 200 microliters. And so I know that I will use a total of 12 mils and 400 microliters. And my reagent B, I use it at a dilution factor of 50. So divide my total volume of my reagent A by 50. So I know that to the 12 milliliters and 400 microliters, I'm gonna add four, 248 microliters of my reagent B. So I'll go ahead and mix those right now. Now I'm gonna mix my reagents. So I have my tube here and I already have my pipetter ready to go. have my 248 microliters uh, ready to go so this is my reagent B And when you dilute both uh, the when you dilute the reagent B into the reagent um, A, you're going to note that it go changes from a blue color to this light green. So now that this is ready to go, I can go ahead and start loading my 200 microliters onto my 96 volt plate, and I already added my samples onto the 96 volt plate. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start loading my 200 microliters of my reagents A and B mixture onto my 96 well, as you can see here. And make sure that there's no bubbles. 
my samples have been fully loaded. Now I just shake them a little bit for about a minute, cover them, and now I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the 37 degree incubator for 30 minutes, and then I'll be ready to read my plate.